It's the number one question for parents of athletes, to play or not to play with the looming threat of a concussion. To help make that decision easier, the University of North Carolina wants to make contact sports a little safer. Whether you play on Fridays, Saturdays, or Sundays, perhaps the biggest fear is that of a head injury. Although many associate concussions with helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, that's not always the case. Even if you get hit in the shoulder or get hit in the chest, um, if you're not prepared and you're not tensing your neck and you're not ready for that hit, those forces can be transferred um, up through um, your neck into your skull and have that same sort of shaking. And that shaking of the brain has a significant impact. The research team at the University of North Carolina Sports Related Traumatic Brain Injury Research Center says the initial symptoms are problems with your balance, dizziness, or trouble concentrating. But of course, it can be much worse than that. The more concerning issues are, are when these, these problems are severe enough to the point where they're impacting your daily life. You're not able to, to do the things that you normally would do. Um, and also, we get very concerned when, when those symptoms don't go away. So typically, we expect seven to ten days, and then these symptoms usually just resolve on their own. Um, however, in 15 to 20 percent of cases, those, that's not the case. And then we, we see these symptoms lasting upwards of two weeks, months later, sometimes even years. Unfortunately, the injury is all too common, and not just in football, in all sports. But with the sheer number of injuries on the gridiron reaching into the millions, the University of North Carolina is taking the next step in research. We like to use our helmet accelerometers to sort of identify players who might be um, at risk, like they're tackling biomechanics maybe off, maybe they're leading with their head too much. Um, we can identify those players and try to coach them more about using proper mechanics, not leading with your head, keeping your head up, and using proper positioning um, when you're going for a tackle. They have over 100 sensors in helmets of Carolina players and other local high schoolers in Chapel Hill. The research team has been able to pinpoint where the players are being hit, which hits may cause concussions, and from there assist them to adjust their techniques to be more safe. The healthy brain would show completely white, no you know, color would be on them. Um, the damaged brains are showing you know, these hot spots that are lighting up. So if we identify a player who maybe we need to look at some tape and make some adjustments with, um, their coaches, will, their positional coaches, um, their athletic trainers, all those people will be involved in the process. So it's really integrated um, and it's for their benefit and for their safety. Um, we want them to have good, you know, healthy, long careers. But how do you prevent concussions? The research team at Carolina says there's no stopping them, but we might be able to reduce them. They say if coaches and players modify their behavior, in other words, change the way they tackle, then many of these injuries can be avoided. These changes are already being made in eastern North Carolina at an early stage. It's called heads up tackling. Heads up! Ready to rock and roll. We're going full speed on the whistle. We partnered up with uh, USA Football. Uh, USA Football is also sponsored by the NFL. And uh, in conjunction with the uh, resources that they have available, uh, we've gotten some coaches certified. Uh, it offers us a ton of drills, a library of, of knowledge that we can use, even in our practices for seven and eight-year-olds. Okay, go. Good, 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 good. If the changes are made early, maybe our athletes will be safer later. Coach Tim Manning says his kids have embraced the heads-up tackling changes and hopes they take the techniques they've learned to the next level. As far as the research team at UNC, they hope their work with sensors can help to greatly reduce the number of concussions in the near future. The September 2008 death of J.H. Rose football player Jaquan Waller was a wake-up call to many of us. It was a call I certainly will never forget. Waller died from second impact syndrome. Basically, Waller had two different concussions in a very short time. It educated a lot of us. And, um, you know, we deal with a lot of people and they just don't think it can ever happen to them. And as I tell our coaches, it not only can it, but it has happened to us. Football, by its very nature, is a violent sport. Rules have been changed and altered to try and make the game safer. Still, this is football. We felt like it was something that needed to be addressed even at our level. So Manning and his coaches have partnered up with USA Football to teach a safer game. We've kind of prided ourselves on, on tackling technique for quite some time. And it's not necessarily that we were teaching a different way. It's that, that the terminology and the visual cues and the verbal cues are a lot different in heads up tackling. And once we've got those, uh, the kids acclimated to the terminology, they've, uh, they've done very well with it. 
Still, concussions can and will happen. Just last month, South Central quarterback Dylan Cunningham was injured against J.H. Rose. Dylan's father, Tim, was visibly upset because this was Dylan's second concussion of the season. This one was worse than the first one. Um, actually, he's had two, one in baseball and, and then uh, one at Hunt. So this is actually the third concussion. This one was more serious than all of them, um, where he couldn't, um, he couldn't come out of the bedroom because of the light, uh, the sunlight outside. So he stayed in basically four days um, at the house. Uh, that happened on a Friday night. Sunday he was actually rushed back to the hospital worrying about symptoms that he was having, headaches and uh, vomiting and stuff. So um, we took him back to the hospital. Um, this was more, this is a much more serious uh, concussion than he ever had before. Um, and it scares, it still scares us. As a parent, if you had to do it over again, would Dylan play football? Mm, that's a very hard question. Um, the athletic ability of my son that, has, that he's had all his life, he's loved the sports. Um, I don't think I'd hold him back from it, but um, now that he's getting to that age and I'm finding more things about concussions, probably not. I probably wouldn't let him play. Mike Hanley is the assistant athletic director for medical services at East Carolina. Since 1989, Hanley has been a clinical instructor in the athletic training program. His primary responsibility has been football, and he's seen how concussions are handled change drastically. And as we've gone along and learned more and more about them, um, sometimes the symptoms will go away, or we find out players lie about the symptoms, but there are certain things they can't lie about. There are certain things they can't hide. That's where the balance comes into play. They can't fake that. Still, today's parents face quite a dilemma. Do they risk allowing their children the chance to play football and risk permanent injury? I think that the league has done a really good job with teaching our young children how to hit and to hit correctly. And I know the coaches that we have here are instilling that in them. Do I worry? Well, I'm a mother. I mean, of course I worry. But I really feel like they've gone a long way with that, and I think they're doing a good job. I don't, um, or I haven't. Um, these helmets are so heavy, and the padding is so thick inside. They fit real tight. And um, it just hasn't been a concern. There's going to be an inherent risk, you know, just from playing the game. Um, but I think that the risk of them getting hurt or suffering some type of head injury is just as likely as them playing any other sport. I really feel like that from the top down, uh, there's, there's really been a concerted effort uh, by each organization to change football at its most fundamental level. And that's right here, right here, right now. <laughs> My son Ryan suffered two minor concussions during his senior year of football, and that was the same year that we lost Jaquan Waller. I truly love the sport of football, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't at least think about asking my own son not to play. Brian Bailey, not on your side, sports.